A 25 centimeter cube sample of dilute sulfuric acid contains 0.025 moles of the acid. All right, they're just giving us the moles. What is the hydrogen ion concentration in the solution? That's an interesting question. Okay, so sulfuric acid, when it is added to water, will form ions. So how many? Hydrogen ions will it produce? So each molecule, so to speak, of sulfuric acid produces two hydrogen ions and one sulfate ion. Why? Because that's essentially what it's made of, right? So if you have one sulfuric acid, so to speak, molecule, you'll produce two ions. So if you have 0 0.025 moles worth of it, you'll produce 0 0.05 moles of oh, hydrogen ions. So what is the concentration of this? Concentration will be 0 0.05 divided by uh, 25 centimeter cube in decimeter cube. The answer is, this comes to two. I can't believe I had to use calculator for this. It's kind of obvious. Two mole per decimeter cube, and the answer is D. Mm. D. Which diagram represents the structure of metal sodium? So sodium being a metal will have positive ions surrounded by a sea of ions. That's this is your ionic compound. This is an any ionic compound, or well, not any with a positive ion and a negative ion. This is a giant covalent structure. Giant covalent. Then you have your metal. And uh, the last one is specific, it's graphite. Poorly drawn graphite. Our correct answer is C. Elements X and Y combine to form gas XY2. What are X and Y? I'll just, you know, like, how is it not carbon and oxygen? I don't know. So they're, they're talking about a gas, right? They're talking about a gas. So calcium will also form CaCl2, very similar to XY. Um, but it's an ionic compound. This is ionic and not a gas. So you have a gas, pretty obvious what it, that is. Okay, answer is C. Rubidium is above sodium in the reactivity series, good to know. What is formed when concentrated aqueous rubidium chloride is electrolyzed? Okay, <clears throat> so in the solution you have rubidium, I think it's, let's just call it R, I don't know what, what its symbol is. So in the solution, in the solution, there's a beaker, you have positive ions and negative ions. Because it's a solution, it'll also have water as well, right? So you have the rubidium ion, it could have any charge, you know, it's positive something, right? And hydrogen is competing with it to discharge. And on the other side, you have <clears throat> you have chlorine ions and hydrogen ions. Oh, sorry, hydroxide ions, right? That's what's in the solution. So the idea is one of these two will discharge and one of these two will discharge. So we have to find that out. At the cathode, at the cathode, the positive ion will discharge because cathodes give out electrons, right? So which of these two will discharge? So rubidium is above sodium. So we know it's placed in the reactivity series and hydrogen is way near the bottom, right? So in the re metal reactivity series, it's the lower of the metals or you know ions that'll discharge, right? That's how electrolysis work. There's an explanation for that as well, but it might be a bit long, so I won't answer it here. Hydrogen will discharge and form hydrogen gas at the cathode. 
On the second side, you have your negative ions, right? And normally hydroxide ion will discharge because it's way bottom, way right at the bottom, right? But the difference over here is there's a caveat. That caveat is if the solution is concentrated, the negative ion in higher concentration will discharge and because higher concentration means rubidium chloride is in higher concentration that means chloride ions are in higher concentration so the one that will discharge is actually chlorine so I think at the anode chlorine will be produced chlorine will be produced and C is our answer right straightforward question the only caveat is when it's concentrated whatever is part it only applies for the negative ion right nothing never for the positive ion if the solution is concentrated it's always chlorine or like always the negative ion in higher concentration will discharge instead of the OH ion. Think about it this way. The OH ion, if this is dilute, the OH ion is in higher concentration and this, you know, whatever is more concentrated discharges. It's always either this or the one that's more concentrated. Right? Okay. Which statement about the periodic table is correct? Melting point increases down the group or the reactivity of the element increases down group. So, I reading this i recall one thing is that you have your halides chlorine bromine iodine right and what's happening to their color is chlorine is a yellow gas ain't it bromine is a orange liquid and iodine is a black solid right it is getting darker as you go down group seven the correct answer is D. In the Haber process, nitrogen and hydrogen react to form ammonia. What is the source of the hydrogen? Uh, nitrogen comes from the air. The hydrogen is actually a byproduct of byproduct of uh, oil. Because when large molecules of unwanted hydrocarbons are cracked into smaller molecules a lot of hydrogen is produced and because you're making so much hydrogen for free you collect it and give it to the people who are trying to make ammonia for fertilizer and they'll take nitrogen you know just from the air by uh, cooling it down and fractionally distillating it so hydrogen is a byproduct of an industry and it's in surplus so you just collect it from there rather than anywhere else so it's pretty cheap to get hydrogen I would imagine right also one more thing is any ammonia plant is generally right next to a petrochemical industry where cracking is happening so it's just easier to take the hydrogen from them the correct answer is comes from oil an atom of element X is represented by you know this thing I think they're talking about lithium because it has three protons looking at the periodic table it's just this is so easily solved if you just look at the periodic table, right? This is just lithium. Which statement is correct? This is in group three of the periodic table because they want you to think, hey, it has three protons, so it must be in group three, right? <clears throat> actually, no. It's about the valence electrons. The outermost electron in lithium is actually... Is the, there's only one electron. What was I saying? There's only one electron in its outermost shell. So it's in group one, actually. Right, it's in okay. A and B are out. The total number of protons and electrons is six. How dare they say that? Okay, so I know it has three protons because it just says three. Right, if it has three protons, that should equal to the number of electrons, which are three as well. I add them together and I get six. So apparently, for this question, which people found pretty difficult I guess because it's mentioned this was the answer so the answer is C let's look at the last point the total number of protons and neutrons is 10 it would be true if it was 
because it's not the total number is actually given to us as a mass number it's actually seven not ten because it has four this number is telling me it has four neutrons and this added to those four makes it seven so it has a total mass number of seven moving on how many electrons are shared in the covalent bonding of methane molecule we have methane let's draw it out and you have hydrogens around it and each bond is essentially an electron or a pair of electrons which means two right how many blue dots are there there are eight <clears throat> the formation of iodine hydrogen iodide from hydrogen and iodine is an endothermic reaction okay i think because the bonds are shown we're trying to talk about enthalpy change of any reaction is given by the energy absorbed by bonds because breaking the bonds require energy to break them so you kind of hold them and you know rip them apart so that's effort so you otherwise they would have you know done it on their own you require they didn't find the energy to ever break apart that's why they're there together right so bond breaking would be the endothermic part and you got to subtract and when they naturally form bonds after their atoms they end up releasing energy and become more stable so bonds are formed which is exothermic right so this reaction is endothermic that means this entire sum is a positive value that implies that bonds being broken are a larger value and a smaller value is being subtracted from it and the net result is a positive result i was going to put a plus sign but like you put a larger number subtract a smaller number for a med and you'll still get a positive value right so reading the com uh, the options the number of bonds broken is greater than the number of bonds formed number is actually exactly the same so big whoop formation of h and i bonds absorb an energy does it and it gives out energy because it's formed right we already discussed that i actually like to write this equation down for anything because it otherwise if i don't have it written down it's going to confuse me very easily the products possesses less energy than the reactants uh how should i answer that possesses less energy this let's say has energy at let's say 100 and this endothermic reaction was 20 and like 20 was the change in energy let's say some i'm just giving numbers endothermic is it absorbed energy so these reactants when they went turned into the product only ended up absorbing energy right uh, they were already at 100 so i plus 20 to them and now they're at 120 so their energy level is actually higher that's what this is trying to talk about think more like a energy profile is the other way to explain this it's endothermic so the reactant side is higher or the product side is higher than the reactant side and look this is actually higher up right and uh, from this side so this is at at a lower energy compared relatively this is at a higher energy relatively i like part c to confuse people total energy changed in bond formation is less than the bond breaking um what what is it saying the total energy change in bond formation is less than that of bond breaking yes that's why it's endo make and the correct answer is D the pH of an aqueous solution of hydrochloric acid is 2 what will be the pH of the acid after addition of 10 grams of 
sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is actually neutral and will not affect anything. It won't hurt the acid. It won't change the concentration of the acid because it's not water, right? So this would do absolutely nothing. So the answer is actually it will remain the same. B. Which of the following methods would not produce ammonia? So if you've ever held a solution of ammonia in like a bottle, it smells a lot. Why? Because the ammonia is readily being produced. Heating it will reduce the solubility of ammonia, right, into the in the solution and it'll try to come out. And yep, you know, it will <coughs> be evaporated. So it will produce ammonia. Produce. Produce. Heating ammonia and chloride with calcium hydroxide, they readily react bases bases will readily react with ammonium salts to produce ammonia gas so this is out heating ammonium sulfate with sodium hydroxide isn't that a test for ammonia isn't that a test for ammonium salt you heat it with sodium hydroxide and you test for the ammonia that comes out by a litmus paper and you know ammonium ions present so this is like lab theory at this point last one heating ammonium sulfate with an acid does very little and ammonia would not be given off because it's not ammonia it's ammonium sulfate so it's different from the gas that's dissolved in what uh, water right so d is our best answer methane sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide are gases which affect the atmosphere and the environment in what way do these gases affect the environment okay methane i think people would probably not know too much about but looking at sulfur dioxide, I think everyone can jump to on the bandwagon that it causes acid rain. And carbon dioxide will cause global warming. Right? Uh, between the two, methane does cause global warming. It's not much of a threat as it's actually a more... Uh, powerful global warming gas so to speak more potent but it doesn't live in the atmosphere for as long as carbon dioxide once it's carbon dioxide is there it just stays so the planet's heating up so yeah depletion of ozone layer is only because of your cfc's so you have d as your most likely answer the table shows the result of test carried out on compound X. Bromine water is added to an organic compound and it is decolorized because it probably found a carbon-carbon double bond. Strictly carbon-carbon, not a carbon-oxygen double bond. Sodium carbonate is added and a colorless gas is given off. What could that do? There's no organic reaction about carbonates, but there are acid reactions. So this is technically testing for because you know carbonates will readily react with acids so this will react with the sodium carbonate will react with any acid function group so we're looking for a molecule that has a carbon carbon double bond and is an acid so looking at we find our acid in the first one but there's no carbon carbon double bond we find an ester in b which is not an acid an alcohol I guess they're just trying to confuse us. B is completely out. Uh, C, we see our double bond. That's what we're looking for, but there's no acid functional group. And I think we'll find it here. Yes, there's that. There is that. And the answer is D.